Hello guys, welcome to the next episode in this sprinter van conversion. In today's video we're going to be building the bench seat in the living compartment of our motorhome. I've changed the design very slightly because we've got that double swivel seat now, so rather than having the L-shaped bench seat that I was originally planning to do, I'm just having a single bench seat underneath the window. That bench seat is actually housing the Truma heater, so we need a lift up lid so that we can get access to that for maintenance and I'm also going to use the rest of that bench seat for some storage. So start of this build we've taken a little road trip here we are at Ikea and we've come here for one particular thing which is going to be fantastic for this little bench seat. Let's go indoors and have a look. So this is what we've come here for these slatted bed bases. They do these birch slats which would be perfect for our bench seat and we only need the 160 by 70 mil slatted bed base and that's a bargain that's only a tenner so let's go and pick one up okay so we're back in the workshop and this is what we've got these are bed slats they're made of a laminated birch ply they're super strong lightweight and they come in about six different size variations. You can get single bed sets of different lengths and you can also get double bed sets. This is a single bed set which is 70 centimeters wide and these ones will stretch out to form a bed that's sort of two meters long. But I got this because there's about 17 slats in here. I can put them relatively close together, cut the length down for our bench seat and get quite a number of them in. Our bench is only 1.4 meters long. I'm not going to use the full length for these slats. I think our bench seat is about 55 centimeters so I'm going to chop sort of about 20 odd centimeters off of these and then we'll make a subframe for them to sit in and then I'll screw them in place at either end. One of the main reasons I bought these bed slats other than they're being you know very strong and, and very reasonably priced is when they're formed they are made in a curved press so they come out with this natural sort of bend in them and what that does is that gives them a bit of spring you can see there if I put them on this flat bench they actually have got a bit of a spring to them so it gives your seat cushion you know a nice bit of bounce to it so when you sit on the seat it's not hard you've actually got that bit of natural spring in it First thing I'm doing is removing all the webbing off the back of these slats. It's held on with some staples. I'm not going to use this webbing because I'm going to put them at slightly closer centres than this is. So I'm just cutting the webbing with a Stanley knife and then teasing these staples out with a screwdriver and a set of pliers. Okay, this is what I've picked out to construct the bench with. It's nominally 2x2 two two, but it actually comes up 38mm by 38mm. So it's probably closer to about inch and a half square. It's CLS, which is Canadian Lumber Standard. You can tell that because it's got these rounded corners. So it's a cheaper grade timber than the PSE, which is the plain squared edge timber that you'd normally use for finished cabinets. But this is more than adequate for our bench construction and is going to be plenty strong enough. One thing to bear in mind when you're designing any framework for your van is how best the wood performs. This timber is going to be much stronger in compression. So if I sit something on that bit of timber, it's going to be really, really strong. So when you're designing your joints, you really want any horizontal members want to be sitting on top of the vertical members. And that way, any weight is going to be transferred straight into that vertical strut. And that is going to give you a really strong joint. If you make a joint like this, where it's butt jointed onto the side, that joint is only going to be as strong as the fixings that you've used. There's really no shear strength there at all. So you'll see what we've done is we've designed a framework for the front of the bench seat, really where everyone's going to be sitting on and most of the weight is going to be transferred. And we're going to use this type of construction. I'm going to build a frame with vertical uprights and all the weight's going to be transferred down through those into the floor. So 
there's the first bit of framework for the front of the bench seat. You can see I've got those vertical uprights, the horizontal member resting on the top of those. So that's going to be really strong. All of the weight's going to be transferred down those legs into that sole plate. This is going to be fixed into the shower partition. I'm also going to fix it into the floor. And then we have got another small partition on that side, which just frames in the end of the seat. I've just got that bit of board in there temporary at the moment, but it will be a board similar to that. We're now going to cut the rail for the back. That will also have some legs down to give that support. And then that's what we're going to hinge the seat portion to. For the lift up seat portion of this bench, I'm going to make the frame like a picture frame with mitered corners. So I've just swung the mitre saw over to 45 degrees and we'll just cut these bits of wood. These are the two long portions of the seat. So I'm going to cut these both at the same time, make sure they're exactly the same. I've just marked the end of this board. I've exaggerated the angle a little bit so you can see what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm going to cut a straight cut vertically down and then this is going to be the angled cut which will form a little rebate which will accept the slats. And obviously because those slats have got a very slight angle to them, that's exaggerated, then they'll sit in there nice and I can get a screw fix in through the slat into the frame. So next we're going to cut this recess out. Because these slats are curved, they've got a slight rising angle to them. So I've just put this little mitre gauge on top of them with my square just to find out what that angle is. And then I'm going to set that angle on the table saw. I've just tilted the blade over to that angle and according to the table saw it's only two degrees. That's the first pass through the saw. That's the angled cut. You can see is a very slight two degree slope on that. Now we just got to do the straight cut. There we go. That's the recess cut in the frame. That will now allow us to put one or two screws in each of the bed slats to secure it to the frame. We've got the seat frame clamped up with glue in the mitre joints. I'm using this picture frame clamp, which is a strap clamp, just to apply some pressure evenly. I've been round with the frame in square. I've checked that we've got all the corners nice and square. And as a double check on things like this, it's always good to check the diagonal measurements. 150, and then if we check the other dimension, also 150, that means it's exactly square. If those dimensions were different, it would mean the piece is slightly racked. So then you just need to just adjust that until those two dimensions are the same, and then it's perfectly square. And then obviously these recesses now are where the slats are going to go. All we need to do now, once this has gone off, we'll establish what the length is, cut the slats to suit. We'll do that with all of them, and then they'll sit in these recesses and we'll pop some screws in there just to hold them in place. I'm just fixing the rear frame and the lift up section of the bench seat together with these butt hinges. This part gets fixed to the side wall of the van and this is the frame that accepts the bed slats. I've just got it hanging over my bench here. I've got them clamped together and then what I'm going to do is just lay the hinge directly on this centre line and then pencil round it and then what we'll do with the trim router, I've got a straight cut in bit with just a very small portion of it showing. We're just going to router out a small recess to accept this butt hinge. Okay. 
that's the bulk of the recess done and then what we'll do is we'll come along with a chisel and just chisel off to the lines and neaten that up. So that's the recess routed out into the two pieces of wood. Now that butt hinge will drop in there and just sit slightly below the surface. What we need to do now is drill for the screws. I've got this little device here in the drill which is a special drill bit for drilling centre holes. It's got a sprung loaded portion of the drill which when you press down it retracts and the drill bit comes out the middle and this outer sleeve just keeps it centred in these countersinks. So it gives you a hole perfectly in the middle. So we've got our hole centred, so now we can just drive the screws in. These bed slats are 70 centimetres long or 700 millimetres. To fit in our bench seat recess, we need that to be 500 millimetres. So ideally I need to cut 100 millimetres off of each end. So what I've done is I've set up a stock block on the mitre saw. I've run a test piece through just to make sure that that's going to cut off exactly 100 millimetres. And because we've got a little stack of slats to do here, and ideally I want to take 100mm off each end, that will make this repetition a lot quicker. What we've got to do now is we've got to drill and countersink a little hole in the end of each slat so that we can put a screw into the frame. Now obviously we've got a number of slats to do here so when I've got a repetitive task like this I always like to make a little jig. So I've got some scraps of wood here. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of these scraps, pin it on the back here. place another one of these little scraps of wood at 90 degrees to that. And then we'll take our slat, place it in there, and then the other block will pin by the side. See now that registers that slat quite securely. I can now take this jig, clamp it to the drill press, and then every time we put a slat in there, it's going to land in exactly the same spot each time. As well as the jig being clamped to the drill press, I've also took the time to set up the depth stop. So when we plunge into each of these pieces, it's not going to travel any further than that and give me a perfect countersink each time. going to set out all the gaps on these slats. First of all, if we shove them all to one end, we can measure how much space we've got. 533 millimetres, 
Now I know I need 17 gaps. So we take 533, divide by 17, and we come out with a figure of 31.3 millimetres. Now, what I've done is I've just cut and sanded a block so that the width of this is exactly that 31.3 millimetres. So now all we need to do now is I can just put this block in here, get my slat, put it up against the block, drill, screw, move the block to the next one, carry on all the way down. I've fixed half of the slats coming this way and now I'm going to fix the other half from this end working this way. If there's the slightest little bit of discrepancy in the size of my block and I've got an adding error as I go along then the difference is going to end up in the middle rather than carry on fixing them all the way from one end and then maybe find that I've got an odd gap at this end. So to make it more symmetrical I'll fix half from this end half from this end. If there is an error, that gap's going to be right in the middle, be less noticeable. So that's the seat portion of the bench all made, all the slats all screwed in position. We've got those hinges on that back rail. So obviously what that will allow us to do, we'll fix that back rail to the wall of the van and then that will allow this whole section to lift up so that we can access the cupboard underneath. We'll just get that fitted in the van. I've just stepped this front support out by about 5mm from the front edge of this lift up section. So I don't want this lift up section to catch on the back of the furniture board that's going to be here, which is going to have the little plastic trim on the top. So I've just given it a little bit of breathing space so that can lift up quite nicely. And then I'm just screwing it to the marine ply floor now with these screws. It's nice and solid. The hinge part of this bench seat and the vertical support legs are both fixed to the ply lining of the van. It's transferring the weight onto the floor. All that remains is to clad the bench seat with furniture board. So there we go guys, that's the structure of the bench complete. Really pleased how strong that is. Super simple construction and very cheap materials. Those two by two timbers only cost me just a little bit over 10 quid. And those bench slats that we got from Ikea, they only cost me 15 pounds. So with the fiver that I spent on hinges and hardware, I guess that whole bench seat came to 30 pounds. So an absolute bargain really. I'll put links in the description below for any of the tools or materials that I've used in this video. I'll also put a link in the description for my free SketchUp files. So if you want to build this bench yourself, you can download a free plan. Thank you once again to everybody who's commented on my videos. I really do enjoy reading all your comments and I will try and get back to all your questions as soon as I possibly can. Thanks very much for watching guys. Cheers.